May our Father, Messiah, and the Holy Spirit be with us. Leviticus chapter 9. On the eighth day, Moses summoned Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. He said to Aaron, Take a bull calf for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering without blemish and offer them before our Father in heaven. And say to the people of Israel, Take a male goat for a sin offering, a calf and a lamb, yearlings without blemish for a burnt offering, and an ox and a ram for an offering of well-being to sacrifice before our Father in heaven, and a grain offering mixed with oil, for today our Father in heaven will appear to you. They brought what Moses commanded to the front of the tent of meeting, and the whole congregation drew near and stood before our Father in heaven. And Moses said, This is the thing that our Father commanded you to do, so that the glory of our Father may appear to you. Then Moses said to Aaron, Draw near to the altar and sacrifice your sin offering and your burnt offering, and make atonement for yourself and for the people, and sacrifice the offering of the people, and make atonement for them, as our Father in heaven had commanded. Aaron drew near to the altar and slaughtered the calf of the sin offering, which was for himself. The sons of Aaron presented the blood to him, and he dipped his finger in the blood and put it on the horns of the altar, and the rest of the blood he poured out at the base of the altar. But the fat, the kidneys, and the appendage of the liver from the sin offering he turned into smoke on the altar, as our father commanded Moses, and the flesh and the skin he burned with fire outside the camp. Then he slaughtered the burnt offering. Aaron's sons brought him the blood, and he dashed it against all the sides of the altar. And they brought him the burnt offering piece by piece, and the head, which he turned into smoke on the altar. He washed the entrails and the legs and the burnt offering, turned them into smoke on the altar. Next, he presented the people's offering. He took the goat of the sin offering that was for the people and slaughtered it and presented it as a sin offering like the first one. He presented the burnt offering and sacrificed it according to regulation. He presented the grain offering and, taking a handful of it, he turned it into smoke on the altar in addition to the burnt offering of the morning. He slaughtered the ox and the ram as a sacrifice of well-being for the people. Aaron's sons brought him the blood, which he dashed against all sides of the altar, and the fat of the ox and of the ram, the broad tail, the fat that covers the entrails, the two kidneys, and the fat on them, and the appendage of the liver. They first laid the fat on the breast, and the fat was turned into smoke on the altar. And the breast and the right thigh Aaron raised as an elevation offering before our father, as Moses had commanded. Aaron lifted his hands toward the people and blessed them. And he came down after sacrificing the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the offering of well-being. Moses and Aaron entered the tent of meeting and then came out and blessed the people. And the glory of our Father in heaven appeared to all the people. Fire came out from our Father and consumed the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. And when all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. Chapter 10. Now Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, each took his censer, put fire in it, and laid incense on it. And they offered unholy fire before our Father, such as he had not commanded them. And fire came out from the presence of our Father and consumed them and they died before our father. Then Moses said to Aaron, this is what our father in heaven meant when he said, through those who are near me, I will show myself holy, and before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron was silent. Moses summoned Mishael and Elzaphan, sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aaron, and said to them, come forward, and carry your kinsmen away from the front of the sanctuary to a place outside the camp. They came forward and carried them by their tunics out of the camp, as Moses had ordered. And Moses said to Aaron and to his sons, Eleazar and Ithamar, Do not dishevel your hair, and do not tear your vestments, or you will die, and wrath will strike all the congregation. But your kindred, the whole house of Israel, may mourn the burning that our Father has sent. You shall not go outside the entrance of the tent of meeting, or you will die, for the anointing oil of our Father is on you. And they did as Moses had ordered. And our Father in heaven spoke to Aaron, Drink no wine or strong drink, 
neither you nor your sons, when you enter the tent of meeting, that you may not die. It is a statue forever throughout your generations. You are to, di you are to distinguish between the holy and the common, and between the unclean and the clean. And you are to teach the people of Israel all the statutes that your father in heaven has spoken to them through Moses. Moses spoke to Aaron and to his remaining sons, Eleazar and Ithamar. Take the grain offering that is left from our father's offerings by fire and eat it unleavened beside the altar, for it is most holy. You shall eat it in a holy place because it is your due and your son's due from the offerings by fire to our father in heaven. For so I am commanded. But the breast that is elevated and the thigh that is raised, you and your sons and your daughters as well may eat it in any clean place. For they have been assigned to you and your children from the sacrifices of the offerings of well-beings of the people of Israel. The thigh that is raised and the breast that is elevated they shall bring, together with the offerings by fire of the fat, to raise for an elevation offering before your Father in heaven. They are to be your due and that of your children forever, as our father has commanded. Then Moses made inquiry about the goat of the sin offering, and it had already been burned. He was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, Aaron's remaining sons, and said, Why did you not eat the sin offering in the sacred area? For it is most holy. And our Father in heaven has given it to you that you may remove the guilt of the congregation to make atonement on their behalf before our Father. Its blood was not brought into the inner part of the sanctuary. You should certainly have eaten it in the sanctuary as I commanded. And Aaron spoke to Moses, See, today they offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before our Father in heaven. And yet such things as these have befallen me. If I had eaten the sin offering today, would it have been agreeable to our Father in heaven? And when Moses heard that, he agreed. Chapter 11. Our Father in heaven spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying to them, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, From among all the land animals, these are the creatures that you may eat. Any animal that has divided hoofs and is cleft-footed and chews the cud, such you may eat. But among those that chew the cud or have divided hoofs, you shall not eat the following. The camel, for even though it chews the cud, it does not have divided hoofs. It is unclean for you. The rock badger, for even though it chews the cud, it does not have divided hoofs. It is unclean for you. The hare, for even though it chews the cud, it does not have divided hoofs. It is unclean for you. The pig, for even though it has divided hoofs, and is cleft-footed, it does not chew the cud. It is unclean for you. Of their flesh you shall not eat, and their carcasses you shall not touch. They are unclean for you. These you may eat of all that are in the waters, everything in the waters that has fins and scales, whether in the seas or in the streams, such you may eat. But anything in the seas or the streams that does not have fins and scales, of the swarming creatures in the waters and among all the other living creatures that are in the waters, they are detestable to you, and detestable they shall remain. Of their flesh you shall not eat, and their carcasses you shall not regard as detestable, and their carcasses you shall regard as detestable. Everything in the waters that does not have fins and scales is detestable to you. These you shall regard as detestable among the birds. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination, the eagle, the vulture, the osprey, the buzzard, the kite of any kind, every raven of any kind, the ostrich, the nighthawk, the seagull, the hawk of any kind, the little owl, the cormorant, the great owl, the water hen, the desert owl, the carrion vulture, the stork, the heron of any kind, the hoopoe, and the bat. All winged in insects that walk upon all fours are detestable to you. But among the winged insects that walk on all fours, you may eat those that have joint legs above their feet with which to leap on the ground. Of them you may eat the locust according to its kind, the bald locust according to its kind, the cricket according to its kind, and the grasshopper according to its kind. 
but all other winged insects that have four feet are detestable to you. By these you shall become unclean. Whoever touches the carcass of any of them shall be unclean until the evening, and whoever carries any part of the carcass of any of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. Every animal that has divided hoofs but is not cleft-footed or does not chew cud, the cud is unclean for you. is unclean for you. Everyone who touches one of them shall be unclean. All that walk on their paws among the animals that are on all fours are unclean for you. Whoever touches the carcass of any of them shall be unclean until the evening. And the one who carries the carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. They are unclean for you. These are the unclean for you among the creatures that swarm upon the earth. The weasel, the mouse, the great lizard according to its kind, the gecko, the land crocodile, the lizard, the sand lizard, and the chameleon. These are unclean for you among all that swarm. Whoever touches one of them when they are dead shall be unclean until the evening. And anything upon which any of them falls when they are dead shall be unclean, whether an article of wood or cloth or skin or sacking, any particle that is used for any purpose. It shall be dipped into water and it shall be unclean until the evening, and then it shall be clean. And if any of them falls into any earthen vessel, all that is in it shall be unclean, and you shall break the vessel. Any food that could be eaten shall be unclean if water from any such vessel comes upon it, and any liquid that could be drunk shall be unclean if it was in any such vessel. Everything on which any part of the carcass falls shall be unclean, whether in oven or stove, it shall be broken in pieces. They are unclean and shall remain unclean for you. But a spring or a cistern holding water shall be clean, while whatever touches the carcass in it shall be unclean. If any part of their carcass falls upon any seed set aside for sowing, it is clean. But if water is put on the seed and any part of their carcass falls on it, it is unclean for you. If any animal of which you may eat dies, anyone who touches its carcass shall be unclean until the evening. Those who eat of its carcass shall wash their clothes and be unclean until the evening. And those who carry the carcass shall wash their clothes and be unclean until the evening. All creatures that swarm upon the earth are detestable. They shall not be eaten. Whatever moves on its belly and whatever moves on all fours or whatever has many feet, all the creatures that swarm upon the earth, you shall not eat. For they are detestable. You shall not make for yourselves detestable with any creature that swarms. You shall not defile yourselves with them, and so become unclean. For I am your Father in heaven, your God. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am holy. You shall not defile yourselves with any swarming creature that moves on the earth. For I am your Father in heaven, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. To be your God, you shall be holy for I am holy. This is the law pertaining to the land animal and bird and every living creature that moves through the waters and every creature that swarms upon the earth to make a distinction between the unclean and the clean and between the living creature that may be eaten and the living creature that may not be eaten. Chapter 12. Our father in heaven spoke to Moses saying, speak to the people of Israel saying, if a woman conceives and bears a male child, she shall be ceremonially unclean seven days, as at the time of her menstruation she shall be unclean. On the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Her time of blood purification shall be thirty-three days. She shall not touch any holy thing or come into the sanctuary until the days of her purification are completed. If she bears a female child, she shall be unclean two weeks as in her menstruation. Her time of blood purification shall be 66 days. When the days of her purification are completed, whether for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring to the priest at the entrance of the tent of meeting a lamb in its first year for a burnt offering and a pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering. He shall offer it before our father and make atonement on her behalf. Then she shall be clean from her flow of blood. This is the law for her who bears a child, male or female. If she cannot afford a sheep, she shall take two dirtle doves or two pigeons, 
one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. And the priest shall make atonement on her behalf and she shall be clean. Chapter 13. Our father in heaven spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, when a person has on the skin of his body a swelling or an eruption or a spot and it turns into a leprous disease on the skin of his body, he shall be brought before Aaron the priest or to one of his sons the priest. The priest shall examine the disease on the skin of his body. And if the hair in the diseased area has turned white and the disease appears to be deeper than the skin of his body, it is a leprous disease. After the priest has examined him, he shall pronounce him ceremonially unclean. But if the spot is white in the skin of his body and appears no deeper than the skin and the hair in it has not turned white, the priest shall confine the deceased person for seven days. The priest shall examine him on the seventh day, and if he sees that the disease is checked and the disease has not spread in the skin, then the priest shall confine him seven days more. The priest shall examine him again on the seventh day, and if the disease has abated and the disease has not spread in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is only an eruption, and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the eruption spreads into the skin after he has shown himself to the priest for his cleansing, he shall appear again before the priest. The priest shall make an examination, and if the eruption has spread in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a leprous disease. When a person contracts a leprous disease, he shall be brought to the priest. The priest shall make an examination, and if there is a white swelling in the skin that has turned the hair white, and there is a quick raw flesh in the swelling, it is a chronic leprous disease in the skin of his body. The priest shall pronounce him unclean. He shall not confine him, for he is unclean. But if the disease breaks out in the skin so that it covers all the skin of the diseased person from head to toe, from head to foot, so far as the priest can see, then the priest shall make an examination. And if the priest has covered all his body, he shall pronounce him clean of the disease. Since it has all turned white, he is clean. But if raw flesh ever appears on him, he shall be unclean. The priest shall examine the raw flesh and pronounce him unclean. Raw flesh is unclean, for it is a leprous disease. But if the raw flesh again turns white, he shall come to the priest. The priest shall examine him. And if the disease has turned white, the priest shall pronounce the diseased person clean. He is clean. When there is on the skin of one's body a boil that is healed, and in the place of the boil there appears a white swelling or a reddish white spot, it shall be shown to the priest. The priest shall make an examination, and if it appears deeper than the skin and its hair has turned white, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. This is a leprous disease, broken out in the boil. But if the priest examines it and in the hair on it is not white, nor is it deeper than the skin but has abated, the priest shall confine him seven days. If it spreads in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is diseased. But if the spot remains in one place and does not spread, it is the scar of the boil. The priest shall pronounce him clean. Or when the body has a burn on the skin and the raw flesh of the burn becomes a spot, reddish white or white, the priest shall examine it. If the hair in the spot has turned white and it appears deeper than the skin, it is a leprous disease. It has broken out in the burn, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean. This is a leprous disease. But if the priest examines it and the hair in the spot is not white and it is no deeper than the skin but is has abated, the priest shall confine him seven days. The priest shall examine him the seventh day. If it is spreading in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. This is a leprous disease. But if the spot remains in one place and does not spread in the skin but has abated, it is a swelling from the burn, and the priest shall pronounce him clean, for it is the scar of the burn. When a man or woman has a disease on the head or in the beard, and the priest shall, exa the priest shall examine the disease, if it appears deeper than the skin and the hair in it is yellow and thin, the priest shall pronounce him unclean, it is an itch, a leprous disease of the head or the beard. If the priest examines the itching disease and it appears no deeper than the skin and there is no black hair in it, the priest shall confine the person with the itching disease for seven days. 
On the seventh day, the priest shall examine the itch. If the itch has not spread and there is no yellow hair in it and the itch appears to be no deeper than the skin, he shall shave. But if the itch he shall not, but the itch he shall not shave. The priest shall confine the person with the itch for seven days more. On the seventh day, the person shall examine the itch. If the itch has not spread in the skin and it appears to be no deeper than the skin, the priest shall pronounce him clean. He shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the itch spreads in the skin after he was pronounced clean, the priest shall examine him. If the itch has spread in the skin, the priest need not seek for the yellow hair. He is unclean. But if in his eyes the itch is checked and black hair has grown in it, the itch is healed. He is clean and the priest shall pronounce him clean. When a man or a woman has spots on the skin of the body, white spots, the priest shall make an examination. And if spots on the skin of the body are of a dull white, it is a rash that has broken out on the skin. He is clean. If anyone loses the hair from his head, he is bald, but he is clean. If he loses the hair from his forehead and temples, he has baldness of the forehead, but he is clean. But if there is on the bald head or the bald forehead a reddish white disease spot, it is a leprous disease breaking out on his bald head or his bald forehead. The priest shall examine him. If the disease swelling is reddish white on his bald head or on his bald forehead, which resembles a leprous disease in the skin of the body, he is leprous, he is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him unclean. The disease is on his head. The person who has the leprous disease shall wear torn clothes and let the hair of his head be disheveled. And he shall cover his upper lip and cry out, unclean, unclean. He shall remain unclean as long as he has a disease. He is unclean. He shall live alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. Concerning clothing, when a leper's disease appears on it, in woolen or linen clothing, cloth, in warp or woof of linen or wool, or in a skin or anything made of skin, if the disease grows greenish or reddish in the garment, whether in warp or woof or in skin or anything made of skin, it is a leprous disease and shall be shown to the priest. The priest shall examine the, the, the disease and put the diseased article aside for seven days. He shall examine the disease on the seventh day. If the disease has spread in the cloth, in warp or woof, or in the skin, whatever be the use of the skin, this is a spreading leprous disease. It is unclean. He shall burn the clothing, whether diseased in warp or woof, woolen or linen, or anything of skin, for it is a spreading leprous disease. It shall be burned in fire. If the priest makes an examination and the disease has not spread in the clothing, in warp or woof, or in anything of skin, the priest shall command them to wash the article in which the disease appears, and he shall put it aside seven days more. The priest shall examine the disease article after it has been washed. If the disease spot has not changed color, though the disease has not spread, it is unclean. You shall burn it in fire. Whether the leprous spot is on the inside or on the outside, if the priest makes an examination and the disease has abated after it is washed, he shall tear the spot out of the cloth in warp or wolf out of the skin. If it appears again in the garment, in warp or woof or anything of the skin, it is spreading. You shall burn with fire in which the you shall burn with fire that in which the disease appears. But the cloth, warp or woof, or anything of skin which the disease appears when you have washed it shall then be washed a second time, and it shall be clean. This is the ritual for a leprous disease in a cloth or of wool or linen either in warp or woof or anything of skin to decide whether it is clean or unclean. Father willing, we will continue with Leviticus chapter 14. May our Father, Messiah, and the Holy Spirit be with us. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is near. Peace.